Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Board Game Specialist. We are on episode 96, and I am Melanie. And I'm Carla. And today we are doing our top nine Viking games. Now, Carla, you've been on a Viking kick. You've just kind of rewatched a Viking series. How excited are you for this list? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And I it just makes me want to play all these games. I have been playing some right. of them, <laughs> but some other ones haven't got to the table, and I really want to play them. It made me want to like grow my wish list like some oh, really? of the games like oh I, I i want these other ones now so i feel yeah. like um three four might be on my list that you have not played oh i i, so, I it might surprised. it might grow even more <laughs> <laughs> true there's a couple on here that it's like that's Viking, right? So <laughs> it might stretch a little bit, but, you know, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Um, now, before we get talking about Viking games, what have you been playing lately? Well, first, we should mention our sponsor. Yes, sorry. Jeez, we yeah. do have a sponsor. <laughs> wow. I have a piece of paper right in front of me, so I would remember. And I still didn't. <laughs> so <laughs> we are sponsored by Games and Couples, which is part of Oshrat Online Counseling Services. And what's really cool is they dedicate uh, to couple counseling and they use the Goffman principle. And what they've discovered is that gameplay, specifically cooperative gameplay, was actually a really great way to put those principles into practice. Um, so they use a lot of board games uh, in their counseling session. And of course, me and Carla think that that's just absolutely amazing. Uh, yes. And then everybody should get involved. And you know what? Games is just such a great opportunity to kind of connect, but not just as a couple, with your children, with your family, with friends. I, it's just good all around. Yeah, I think you could use it in any type of counseling. Any kind, so. type of like team building, like mm -hmm. anything like that. I think it's a great... Tool. Yes, it's very, very amazing. Mm -hmm. We're we're fans, anyways. I don't yeah. know if that comes across, but <laughs> <laughs> anything we can make throw board games into in the real world is, you know, it's just yeah. a bonus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, now for real, what have you been playing lately? <laughs> so I got this little card game that has been kind of all the rave on the content creators. Um, web kind of thing. Oh, um, it's called Far Away. Now this okay. is just a little card game. It literally plays in ten minutes. I would say. Um, okay. Now I can't remember how many it plays up to. I think it's like maybe six, but I've only played it with two. Now all you're doing is playing eight cards in front of you, and that's basically the game. But how you do that is you draft these cards. You do start with three. And on the cards, they're going to have kind of a scoring condition. Some of them will have just some symbols. So, and then they also have a number in the bottom right. Might be the top right. But anyway, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> and so say I played like a 16 down and on it, it had some little symbols and then a little scoring thing at the bottom. Now, I'll just play that card down and then everyone like chooses one that you choose it face down, then you'll flip it. And then after that, you're going to draft from the middle, um, depending who had the lower number. So if um, I had the lowest number, I would draft and that would go into my hand. And then the next round, we do the same thing. Now this round, if I happen to play one consecutively higher, I would get to choose one of these little cards. I can't remember the name of them, but they are added um, scoring or bonus cards that will help you throughout the uh, help you at the end of the game. So you continue to do this until you have eight cards. Then you're going to flip them all over and you're going to start at the back and flip it and you're going to okay. start scoring that one. So it's kind of neat because you have to like reverse think of how you're going to score <laughs> because you're playing <laughs> these cards consecutively or like sometimes you aren't playing a consecutive number, but you're playing them like next to each other. And those first ones you have to realize are going to score last. And the last ones are going to score first. So everything that's flipped down doesn't count until it's flipped up. So that oh, okay. first, that last card that you flip first, whatever the scoring on it is, if you don't have any, which all your cards are flipped down, but the little cards that you get for playing consecutive ones might have the symbols you need or like maps. There's these little maps that are on some of the cards and those will let you choose more of the little cards 
and then you um, like you get to take more, but you only get to keep one. So it'll give you more options. But it's it sounds like kind of silly, but it's it's very addicting. It's also on BGA right now too, so it's easy to learn and play. But it's I'm gonna bring it to Melcon because we have to play it. It's nice. such a quick like filler game, but so fast like. 10 minutes and I swear it's done because you're drafting at the same time, you're playing at the same time, and then you're scoring. And then as soon as you play it, you're like, okay, I did terrible. Now I got to try it again and try to reverse think my scoring. It's really cool. I can see why the hype is there just because it's such a fast, neat, quick game. And those are sometimes hard to come by because usually it's like a 30 minute um, game where you get like satisfaction, but very rarely in a 10 minute game, do you get that type of engine building satisfaction? So that was one of mine far away. It's called now the next one. Um, I had been kind of hunting for quite a while and it's out of stock. I haven't really tried to look far just kind of in the areas that I usually do like board game bliss, my locals, um, game stores and whatnot. And, um, they're usually out of stock. So I kind of thought, well, maybe they're out of print. But I was at um, my local escape room last couple weeks ago with my family. We all went, me and John and the kids. And they sell a bunch of board games. And most of them are escape room type games or um, exit games, you know, all that kind of genre. But this happened to be there. And it's like a, a little dungeon crawl. And it's called Escape the Dark Castle. Now, okay. It's black and white. The box is black and white. And That's the, whole the picture game, you shared today, right? Yes. Yes. Right. I just shared okay. it. The whole game is black and white. The art is very, very simple. Um, some people say it's very um, nostalgic from like role playing games back in the, I don't know if it's 70s or 80s, which I was never into then. So I, I couldn't tell you. But I don't find it like that bad the art i mean it's just black and white and it's you know i would prefer color of course but it's still kind of neat because it's very simple and i do like simplistic art as well so what you do is you can play up to four players and you um will each take a character now you have um i think there's six in the base box and then you can get more with some expansions but you have these characters and they have might, cunning, and wisdom. Those are the three traits and they all vary. So in a solo game, you play two characters. So you would try to balance them where, you know, some will have lots of one and little of the other and so on. So you have these two characters and they each have their own um, dice for their character. So like you have a tanner and a smith and a cook and I can't remember what the other two are right now, but... So you'll have that one dice and then you set up the deck and you use 15 of the chapter cards and then you have three bosses in the game and you'll choose one and put it at the bottom and then you start and um, you start the game with two items. So there's a little deck of items and you each have one for each character and then you'll start going through the chapters and they'll kind of tell you ask you things or not ask you but tell you things like um you know you've gotten injured whatever and you just take some some injuries and you start with 18 health points that's in a a two player or a solo game I'm not I think it's less as you go with more players but so you flip this card and so it might just tell you you know you're injured whatever or it might tell you you have to go into combat and so there'll be these symbols the cunning wisdom and might on the bottom and depending what kind of monster or whatever you're encountering, it'll have different things. So it might have two of those symbols and then it has a little um, pawn symbol. And that means you'll also roll one of those character dice for each person. So you'll have the two symbols and then you roll two dice. So that'll give you two more symbols. So you have four symbols you're basically um, combating. And so you each have one of your own dice and you will roll them. And you'll try to roll the things that are, are showing like the four symbols on the dice. And if, because you on our dice, some of us will have doubles of things. So it might show two wisdom and two might that we have to combat. And I may have rolled a double of wisdom and you may have rolled a double of might. And now we've totally killed this monster. And then we get another item card. So that's all fine and dandy. But then next card, it might show like a bigger monster and it might have like four dice plus two character dice. So that's six dice. And we only have two to roll. So we're never going to beat them in one roll. 
But our items can kind of uh, manipulate the dice sometimes, or they can just give us health back. And basically, you're just going through this 15 card chapter deck to stay alive. And if one of you dies, you lose the game. I mean, if both of you die, obviously you'd lose. But if you can just even remain with one health each, you win the game. Very simple. Um, the dice are really nice and big and chunky. And it's just it's just a really cool one that I can play in front of the TV again as I'm watching Vikings. Because <laughs> I'm still on the sequel right now, so I'm watching that. But it's it's so cool. Like now, of course, I want to go out and get more of the chapter cards so that I have more of the story to go through because it's such an easy one to play. Like it, and when I had said in um, my post that it took ten to I think I said ten minutes to half an hour. The ten minutes would be if you lost, you know, in the first few cards because you could <laughs> very well lose. It's not an easy game, but it's still fun. But yeah, that's uh, Escape the Dark Castle. Nice. What about you? What have you been playing? So, actually, I'm going to talk about a couple of little games. Now, I went on a small getaway to Banff, Alberta. So, we're lucky. Banff is an amazing place, and it's just a couple of hours from where I live. So, we went and spent, like, a three-day there. Um, and, of course, I brought a couple of games just in case. Um, <laughs> I did check a store that was called Duck Duck Moose. Because uh, um, a lot of little stores there have similar stuff, but Duck Duck Moose had some of that stuff, but it's the only one that actually had a couple of board games. Um, we ended up bra grabbing, what is it called? Like Duck Moose Puck something, you know, where like oh, Taco Cat something pizza, whatever. Canoe. There's canoe yeah, there. exactly. So I haven't played that one yet, yeah. but I did end up grabbing that while yeah. I was in Banff. But we ended up playing mountain goats which was the perfect oh, yeah. game to play there because yeah. you're playing as mountain goats trying to make it on top of these mountains now first of all this game is bright and vivid colors and it's like just really neat to watch not like your black and white one at all right yeah. <laughs> Opposite. but it's all like it comes in a fairly small box it's all cards and you set cards and you'll have like the top row cards that's the number and it'll go from five to 12 i want to say 5 to 12 yeah i think so yeah i think it is so something like that then under the five there's three cards that goes underneath and then under the six there's three cards and under seven there's two and under eight there's two and so on and then everybody that's playing will have their selection of mountain goats and you each have your own color and these are like these little wooden meeple in the shape of a goat it is adorable and you put them on the bottom of each of those numbers so you have your your all your goats set up there and then you get four dice and you roll your dice and then you cluster them however you want so maybe i roll a six and a six and a two uh and a and a three or something now i could put my six with my 10 to get an 11 and go up on the eleven. Or I could use a six just as a cluster of its own, just a six, and move my goat up on the six. Now, ideally, I wouldn't have my two and my three alone because there is no two and three mountains. I wouldn't get to move up. But I could put them together and go up on the five mountain. And then you move your goat up one space. Now, you can share those space with other goats except for when you reach the top of the mountain. It's kind of a king of the hill type game. The first time you get there, you're going to collect a token. You know, if you're on the five mountain, you're going to collect a number five token. That token's going to be worth five points and it goes in front of you. Now, your goat stays there. If you roll another five, you're going to collect a second number five token and you're going to put that in front of you. Now, if somebody bumps you like a name roll a five and make it to the top of the mountain they bump you all the way down to the, the the bottom of that mountain and you have to make your way up again if you want another five token and you have that that happens on all of those different mountains now if you ever get one of every like a token of every mountain available you get one of the bonus tokens and that'll be worth 15 points and then 12 points and then nine and six so the first it pays to be the first one to get one of each because it's a, a lot of bonus points. And the game ends when either those four bonuses are gone or when three of the mountains have run out of tokens. Um, 
it's super simple. It's kind of a push your luck dice game, like King of the Hill dice game. I guess push your luck, not so much, but you're trying to make it to the top. And what's really frustrating is if like you got somebody at the top of the mountain and they keep collecting it again and again and again, and you're like, oh, I need to get up there. And you're just not rolling Knock the same off. combination. Yeah. To, exactly. Um, I, I actually quite enjoy this one. It's very light. It's very simple. Um, but it was compact to travel with um it didn't take lots and lots of space because we only had like a little hotel table to play on and that was plenty of room to play and it was just it was so great and then while we were in banff we did see mountain goats so it was kind of fitting to the environment of where we were as well right yeah that's so true. that was the first one mountain goats and it was just perfect for the the venue and now the second one i played is an oink game and I read up about it. Like, it was one of those that Justin's left behind. I was deciding if I wanted it or not. And it's Dropolter. Dropolter? 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 I don't know. Is it a blue box? Yes. Okay. And I was reading up on it, and then I was like, oh, I don't think I need this game. Because it reminded me of that Ghost Blitz game. Oh, okay. And I was like, I have Ghost Blitz. I don't need this yeah. one. But then we sat down to play games one day. <laughs> one day, And then Lee's like, all right, let's play this one. Because it was on the table. And I'm like, okay, I guess we're buying it. <laughs> so I cracked it open. And it's a very simple game to play. I think Lee has a huge advantage over me because his hands are so much bigger. Oh, and let me explain how the game works. <laughs> so you have five different components. You have like this little ring thing. You have like uh, a like a a square that's a bunch of like yellow dots that would go in your hand, and you have um, one that's in the shape of a seashell, like a small seashell, and you have one that's like a little blue wooden token of some sort, and there's another one I forget. Oh, a big red cube, and then you have these in your hand, and you gotta shake them in your hand. And then you close your fist around them and then you put your hand face down and then you flip a card over and that card will show anywhere from one to four of the items you have in your hand. And without using your other hand, you have to drop out of your hand only the items that are showing on that card. Just by feel? And, well, you can look, you can open your hand and drop oh, off, okay. but you can't drop anything else. And then once you've dropped the items that are on the card, with your other hand, you can reach and grab this wooden ghost. So, so far, I was like, this is very much like Ghost Blitz to a mm -hmm. certain degree. I don't know if we'll need this. Is this even going to be fun? It's amazing. <laughs> so, I'm like, and then he's like, man, this stupid, like, little blue thing is stuck in the ring. And you're trying to pull it out of your hand. And by the end, then, like, somebody's already you know, grab the other one. Now, if you grab the ghost and you're the first one to do it, you collect a tiny little bell and that goes in your hand. And then you shake your hand and you go down and you start with the next round. If you ever drop your bell, your bell's gone. You've lost that point. So you don't uh -huh. want to drop your bells as you start collecting them. And then it was like where Lee's hands are so big. <laughs> so he's holding all these things, no problem. And I'm like he can struggling. <laughs> Mind you, he's like, his hands are so big. He's having a hard time reaching the stuff that's in the bottom of his palm. Uh, and yeah. it was, it was funny. Like it was, and then we ended up playing it again with Patrick and he got right into it. Now, after a while, I was like, oh, my God, like, they're sticking to my palms. <laughs> like, your palms are getting sweaty from the stress. And, like, it has a whole, like, degree of, I don't know, challenges that comes up. And then it's like, oh, man, I dropped my bell. So it's like, and then you lose that point. And it was satisfying. Like, and for such a tiny little oink game. And then to look at it and then to read up on it, I was like, I don't think we need this. <laughs> and it's like, but we played it. And I was like, Okay. This is a fun one. Like, it's simple. You could play it with anybody. You know, like, it could be with kids. It could be with grandparents. Like, it, it, it is a game that you could just play with anybody. It's tiny. It's not complex at all. This isn't like, okay, we're having this big game night. Let's pull out this little game. You know, like, it's, <laughs> it's a filler game. It definitely is a filler game. But it was a neat filler game. I was impressed with it. So you said you were playing this, but you're saying we don't need this. Were you playing at a cafe? No, no, because 
It was at my house because this was part of the games Justin was selling. Oh, okay. So you didn't. And know. okay, gotcha. I, it was there. I looked at it and I was looking at it. So it was on my table. But I was like, eh, no, I don't think I'll buy it. But it was still yeah. on the table. So when Lee sat down to play, he's like, well, let's play that little one. I was like, okay, I guess we will get it, right? <laughs> so, and, I, and I'm glad, and I'm glad we played it, and I'm glad we, we are going to get it because <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. So, yeah, Dropolter, Dropolter, or however that's supposed to be spelled, uh, pronounced. It's like D R O, and then P O L T E R. I think I can see the box. Yeah. I just didn't know what the name of it was. Yeah, and I'm sure I I think the box I have might be like a Japanese version box yeah. too. So Yeah. It but has some Japanese yeah. on it. Yeah, no, it was it's a simple simple game, but it was very satisfying. Cool. All right. So then we're going to get started with our top 9 Viking games. Um so yeah, I'm kind of curious to see now did you have a big list? I had about 15, I think, 15 or 16. I have a recent okay. list. So, yeah, I think yeah, I was I, around I was that same, that same um, amount about. Um, I'm, I have it right here, so I'm going to look real quick. I had, oh, 13, so a little bit less. Yeah. Well, and I do have one honorable mention because only because they have remade this game. So, it very well could have made this list. I haven't played mm-hmm. the Redux yet, but that was um, Shipwrights of the North Sea. So that oh, was, yes. I think that was the first game in Shem Phillips North series. So basically his first game of those series. And it was like, it's about building ships and it's kind of a card game, but he has since then rebuilt it and it's called Shipwrecks of the North Sea Redux. Mm -hmm. And so people are saying it's really, it's quite good. So I would like to try that one, but that one didn't make the list. What about you? Did you have any honorable mentions? Guess which one did not make my list? Odin's uh, Feast for Odin. (laughs) Feast for Odin. (laughs) And I was like, oh, it's yeah, I guess it's, it's on my list, but it's at the (laughs) At the bottom. Yeah. Um, another one that I is like really low on my list is Reavers of Midgard. Okay, have played Which that is one. like the sequel to Champions of Midgard. Mm-hmm. And I think that was just because when I played it, the best part about Champion of Midgard that I like is the dice rolling. And mm-hmm. Reavers of Midgard, you never roll the dice. Oh, really? Like you have dice, but you don't roll and battle them. And I was like, what's the point? And it just felt mm-hmm. too cluttered of a game oh, i would yeah. have to play it like i would maybe have to play it again and see i think it was just like i don't roll the dice and i had such like i don't know issues with that that i yeah. just d- that was the game that was like the game <laughs> it was for sale at car treat and i remember saying mel's gonna buy this game i had yeah just and i said nope. that you would and you were like no i was like what i was sure you yeah because i am mad game. at that game and i was just like you don't even roll the dice. That was the best part of this game series. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So I, I should, honestly, I should maybe give this one a try one more time. But I just felt like, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just, like, directed it for me. <laughs> yeah. Another one I would like to play that I don't have and I don't think anyone I know has. It's just called Vikings and it's I think it's by like Keesling and Kramer. I hear good things about and, that one yeah. and yeah, I've never played it. Now I, I do have print. one that's called yeah. Vikings Warriors of the North. Oh, now wait, did you I have it? not heard good things about this game. Oh, the box okay. though looks amazing. I have read up about it mm-hmm. and it's kind of like you're moving your ship around and you're trying to steal the the princesses of the other clans or whatever. Oh yeah. And cool. stuff but like the Mo like the the way that you move your boat has to do with the runes on each location. So if you get this particular rune, you would have to move your boat a certain way. And it looked really interesting and I wanted to try it, but it's one of those three or more players. So it just oh, never yeah, happened. Like new games different. like that, it's easy me and Lee to play, but mm-hmm. we can't so that it just hasn't happened. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's there's a few that I haven't got to that I would like to. And there's one mm-hmm. that I would like to replay. I've only played once, but I know it's going to be on your list, so I'll mention it then. Oh, I'm yes. curious now. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, let's get yeah. started. What's your number nine? Okay. My number nine is Explorers of the North Sea. And this is Shem Phillips, the first series he did in that uh, Northwest, South, East series. I think this was the second game, I believe. And it was made in 2016. Now, this one is a tile laying game but also a pick up and deliver kind of area control game. And it's actually quite neat. Um, you have these big hexagon hexagon tiles and on your turn, you have to place a tile and it has to match up just like a Carcassonne thing. So like land to land, sea to sea. And uh-huh. um, what is on it, there might be some um, livestock on it. There might be a settlement on it. There might be certain things. And then you will place those things on um, the tile. And then you have your little Viking ships that you will sail around and pick up things and then bring them back to land um, to like um, basically to own and sell or used for other things. But um, the neat thing is there's also these enemy ships that you will go into and have to fight sometimes or you'll raid the settlements and those will give you big points and. Um, you can also raid other ships, other Viking ships, so you can make it a nasty game if you want, or you can kind of just go on your own way and you kind of all go out to separate areas. It's quite neat, and I, I've i only played it uh, twice, I believe, but I did like it, and I'm, I'm thinking about it now on this list. I almost think it's one I might want to acquire if I ever find it on the um, used market, but... It was it was good and uh, like I love tile laying I love matching those things up and then adding the different mechanics in there with the pickup to deliver and a bit of area control is just it's super nice. neat. So yeah, that's my number nine, Explorers of the North Sea. I haven't played that one. No, that was so, not one I. So that's might be five of mine you haven't played. Oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. All right, my number nine. Okay, this is the one that I would say might be a stretch as far as like a Viking themed game goes, but it's called Dice and Dragons and Mm. it's a roll and write game. And it's kind of like, um, what's that movie with a toothless dragon? Oh my God. Why am I drawing a blank on this? Toothless dragon. You know, it's like the black dragon with, oh my God, you need to have little or kids. I'm going to go Google that. That's going to drive me crazy. (laughs) Um, Toothless dragon is from the movie How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, okay. Okay, So it's like a a cartoon series, How to Train Your Dragons. Now my kids loved it. We watched all the movies. We've watched all the episode of every TV series that they've made about it. And there was a lot out there and it's just so good. But the base of the story is you are a Viking village and you battle dragons. Now, in the How to Train a Dragon, the one Viking kid befriends the dragons and starts training them. And then they kind of start cohabitating with dragons. But in Dice and Dragons, you're Vikings from a Viking village and you are attacking the dragons. And you, you, you don't befriend them and train them. You're just you know, have to go through and defeat all these different dragons. And you have these dice and you'll roll the dice and the dice have different symbols on it. And depending on the symbols that you roll, you can activate a different type of attack that you would have available um, to attack this dragon. But then the dragon can also defend as well. So it's like a dragon battle roll and write type game that's also a campaign because you would go through all the different dragons well i guess i would say scenario like you could start with a smaller dragon and move up but then from one dragon to the next one like you would gain gold and you can spend that gold to acquire different things so that you can roll different combination as well like it was just an interesting game i like the looks of this game it looks neat doesn't it yeah you have this yeah Yeah, I did. And it's one of those when I was starting to run out of room, I let go and then I have regrets. Oh, yeah. It looks beautiful. I know. See, and then that's why I don't sell (laughs) games. I don't sell games. Like, that's when I didn't sell games at all. And then I was like, oh, that that one is no longer here. But every time we talk about Vikings or dragon games, this one makes my list. I should have kept it. Um, But it was one of those that, 
Like, I mean, we had played it a few times. So, you know, like, I, I did get my fill of it. Do oh, I yeah. need to keep it? Mm, you know, like, and it was one of those where, like, we would play me and Lee, and I was like, okay, we can't defeat this flipping dragon because it's cooperative. And, like, Drone, sit down. We need your help. <laughs> so then we play again, the three of us, all three of us then battling this same dragon, and we're going to manage to defeat it, right? Like, it was, it was just an interesting thing and then like if you had activated one attack then you couldn't activate it again so you would try to activate different attacks um for that same round now when your round came back they were all available to you again like it was just it was interesting and it was neat now it's like it's about dragons but the story is you are vikings trying to defeat this dragon so it's viking game but i mean it is definitely stretching the theme here a little bit yeah, but that's my no. number nine, Dice and Dragon. It was published in 2018, created by Elad Goldstein. That one looks cool. I want to mm -hmm. try and find one. Awesome. All right. Well, my number eight is Odin's Ravens. And this was made by Thurston Gimier in 2002, and then it was remade in 2016. I have the remade copy, and I... That 2002 copy looks horrible yeah like the box looks but horrible wow did they ever do a job on the recover <laughs> because these cards in this game are so vibrant like the colors are so bright and beautiful the art is very simple but it's still beautiful what is going on is odin is um, releasing his ravens and they are racing to earth and back to find give him some information what's going on at earth and so what happens is it's only a two player game and you each have a raven. There's a white and a black. Well, I guess it's wood colored and then a black one. And mm -hmm. you start on opposite sides of the track, basically. And this but track on the will same go end. on the same end. Yes. But you're going to yeah. make this long, I think it's 16 cards. Yeah. And so, um, and it's only one card, but there's two sides on each card. And so you're going to like race up to the end and then you're going to swap sides and then come back. Mm -hmm. And so how you do that is you start with a hand of cards and you can choose um, out of um, terrain cards or what would you call the other ones? Like, uh, it's like special action abilities cards or, or action yeah. cards. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if I had a terrain of like, um, I'm just going to say sky, then the next one was sky and then I had like a land and then like a wheat field or I can't even remember what they all are but and I had those cards in my hand I could move my raven right up to all through those and then I'd, I'd discard those cards out of my hand but if I couldn't do anything um, I would if I did choose some of the action cards I may be able to skip one or I may be able to like um, add another card in there or take one away and like jump that completely or like screw you over and add more cards to your path, which you don't usually want to do in the first half because then you're adding them to yourself as well. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's funny when you kind of get to the end, that's when you start like adding more cards to the other player's path. And basically all you're doing is trying, it's a race. You're just trying to get to there and back before the other player. And mm -hmm. it's nice because even in a two player game, if the first player does get there first, the second does have a chance to do it as well. And then if you've tied, you got to go again and so on and so on. But it's just, it's a really fast game too. I'd say like 20 minutes maybe, Yeah. but it's so satisfying. The cards are like these thick, long, narrow cards, but just uh -huh. so beautiful and satisfying to hold. And, it's just a really neat thing. And I, I didn't even actually realize the theme was Vikings when I, I was just like, it's birds. <laughs> and here's the funny part. This is how ridiculous I can be sometimes. I had to look up, uh, what kind of birds are they in there? Are those eagles? Even though it says Odin's <laughs> raven in the title. <laughs> and I look, I'm like, oh my God. Seriously? They're ravens. But it, that's how I didn't have a clue of what the theme was about. And then I looked at some of the action cards and I'm like, oh my God, it's like, um, like Loki in there and all kinds of things that I just from the looks, they don't really say, but it's, it's just beautiful. And it's a really, really nice little filler. Cherry just absolutely loves this game. It's one nice. of my favorite two player games, but yeah, it's fun. And that's Odin's Ravens. 
my number eight is Odin's Ravens oh, no as well. So, wow. yeah, and it's one of those that it's another one that was like, okay, this is stretching the theme. Like, it has to do, do so? with well, Viking mythology. So, it is Viking yeah. theme, but you don't well, have a Odin Viking is the- feel playing. No, but Odin is the one of the three gods of the Vikings. Yes. So, yeah, so it's, it's definitely, definitely related, but it's yeah. not... If you were going to say, okay, Viking game, this doesn't have a Viking feel as you play. But no, it is cool. And then, yeah, you can shift a card up whatnot. so that you create less cards on your side, and it kind of changes the terrain on the other person's side. Like, that was really neat. Now, when we were in Banff, we went to the museum in Banff, and they had, like... All the wildlife animals taxidermy, and they had ravens there. Ravens are huge. Yes, I didn't realize. Like I thought mm-hmm. they were like a crow, but they are not. That's why I thought huge. these things were eagles because just by remembering yeah. the look of them, I'm like, were those eagles? <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. So that was that was. Um, I actually I remember like I was like pointing it. I was like, oh my god, Lee, come check this out. Look how big yeah. they are. So yeah. Um, that was a surprise, but yeah. So first crossover, crossover. same position. Yeah. Odin's Raven. We will have a few more crossovers, but I don't think they'll be straight across because my next one, I feel like will be on your list, but will be further down. And it may be further down on my list if I played it more, but I feel like I've only played it once, maybe twice. And that was with you. And that's Champions of Midgard made in 2015 by Ole Stanis. Now, this one is a Viking game. You yes. are raiding. You are, um, it's a worker placement where you are going to um, get more workers, which are dice. Mm-hmm. And you might explain this game a lot better because I know you've <laughs> played this a lot. But it it was so neat. And the thing is, I had heard the Valhalla expansion makes it like, even a hundred percent better, kind of yeah. what Tuscany did to Viticulture. So I yeah. don't know if you've ever played with that. Expansion. I have not yet, but no. I hear the same thing. But if you love it at this, you're gonna absolutely love it. because then when you die, you get all these other. You get more option like, if you yeah. your warriors die. Yeah. yeah, because you have to like collect food, and then when you go and raid, you have to bring um, your Vikings and food on because sometimes. Um, when you flip over that card, I can't remember what it is, but it can like t- take some food away from you or can kill some of your Vikings. And mm-hmm. then if you don't have enough to succeed, then you basically mm-hmm. fail. So it's you have to make sure you've like gathered enough Vikings. And then each colored dice are different type of Vikings. Is that not? That's is that right. Correct? Different warriors. You got like the swordsmen and the spearmen right. and the axemen and. Yeah. And some of the monsters that you fight will not, like, spearmen. Yeah, you can't send certain them. warriors after certain monsters. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so neat. Um, yeah, I would, would really like to play this one again. And that's it. I'm at number seven, Champions of Midgard. My number seven is one that we've played recently. It's kind of probably, like, my newest discovery for a Viking game. Uh. And that's Nar. And this one was published in 2023, created by Thomas Dupont. And it's, I mean, it's Viking theme. The artwork is Viking. And actually, the artwork is beautiful in this one. And you have all these characters and all these traditional, like, Viking women and men. And, like, all the, you know, like, all the the borders and all the icons are, like, just the symbolism and everything exactly it's yeah. just the artwork with this one is spot on for this type of game mm-hmm. and we each have a boat um because it's like we're going through the boats and you'll be collecting cards and the cards will have symbols and you get to collect those resources um and then as you add like if i took a card and it's a green card and then i get another card and it's another green card then i get to activate all my green cards again and then you're doing this collecting cards and eventually you can spend those cards to acquire these um kind of gold cards and then those goes on top of your player board and when you collect enough bracelet that you can trade to activate those cards Depending on what level you 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 would activate, if you activate by first level, you could just get all the icons that are in the first portion of the card, and it could be there's no icons on it. If you activate the second level, you get to collect everything that's in the first and second portion of the card. And if you activate the top level, you get to collect all the symbol on all the cards you've collected. And 
you got to like an interesting balance where you want to make sure you've collect enough cards so that you keep kind of collecting those resources so that you can then spend those cards for um, acquiring these other ones. But you don't want to spend all of your cards too soon to buy those gold cards. And that's my mistake. I do that all the time. I collect cards and I spend them all. So I'm not activating and collecting as much resources as everybody else is, but I'm collecting these cards earlier on. Uh, but then it's just kind of part way through the game. Everybody starts passing me. Um, so it has like an interesting balance. You want to make sure you've collect enough cards and you keep enough cards so that when you're activating uh, the resources on there, you're, you've got, you know, plenty to activate. But it's just a really interesting. And then you move along this track that will kind of give you bonus points each round. Um, and it's the first one to reach 40 points that wins the game. So I'm pretty sure I have yet to win this. Just like I said, I know I have a losing strategy and I just can't get myself <laughs> not to play that way. But <laughs> so that's my number seven, NAR. Yeah, good choice. My number six is Veluspa. And this is made in 20... I'm not sure I'm even saying that right. Veluspa or Veluspa. Made mm -hmm. in 2012 by Scott Caputo. Now, Scott Caputo has made quite a few games we've played um, which surprised me because I had found this game a few years ago and and had seen it on um, Amazon because it was kind of out of print. And I'm like, ooh, that's a decent price. And I went to order it. And I think as soon as I like, pressed like the buy, it was sold out. And oh, so nice. then it's kind of been in the back of my mind. And then at Gobfest this year, I found it at the uh, the flea market and I found it for 10 bucks. So I'm like, Perfect. oh, nice. And it was basically brand new. It was punched, but this is just a tile laying game. And I would say it's an abstract strategy game, but it has a Viking theme because it's all the Viking characters that you're playing. So each character does its own thing as you're playing these tiles. So all you're trying to do is you place a tile and you score points. Sometimes you may not score points, but you're setting yourself up for next time. And so what you do is there's a tile that will start in the middle of the table and then you go around just playing tiles. Now I might play um, a, uh, a Loki tile and a Loki tile next to any tile makes them a zero. So the whole point of scoring is as soon as you place your tile, you will score the row and column as long as you are the highest in both the row and column, you, even if you're the highest in one of them. So if I put one, say, like um, at a T kind of thing, T section, where there was other tiles, and I placed it there, and I was not the highest in the row, but I was the highest in the column, I would count how many tiles there are, and then I would score that many points, and then it would just carry around. Now, each tile does different things, whereas like the Thor and the Odin are just high numbered tiles, like a seven or an eight, and that's the highest. Um, but then Loki is like the crazy one, and he makes everybody a zero around him. So if you place him next to a Thor, that brings that back to zero. And now next time you can place a tile that is high and score that column or row again. Um, there's dragons that you can place on top of tiles, so you could completely cover up a high tile. Um, you have... Uh, troll tiles that basically you place it and then nothing can go around it. So you might use that to prevent somebody else from making a high column number or something. There's wolves and it's neat because whenever you place a wolf, um, there are only fours, I believe, but anytime you place another one in your column or row, it multiplies and makes the wolf stronger. So once you have three wolves, they're worth 12. So you'll be the highest in that column of row and you'll get to score all those. It's It reminds me of like a chess match with a, a cool Viking theme and funner because you're placing nice little colorful, <laughs> beautiful art tiles. It is awesome. Um, I didn't think that it, like I didn't have a clue what it was about. I just loved it by the looks of this game, the fact that it was a tile lane game and so glad that I got it and for such a great price. But that's my number six, Voluspa. Perfect. Yeah, I've I remember you talking about it, but I haven't tried this one yet. So interesting. Um, my number six is a game that I bought at Princess Auto. So I mean Princess Auto is like a tool and parts store, and you just don't think you would see board games there, but 
in their like miscellaneous area, they mm-hmm. started to have more and more board games. And I've actually discovered a few ones there that's been like interesting. And this is one that got picked up because it was a theme that my kids would enjoy. And that's God of War. It was published in 2019 and it's created by Fel Barrows and Alex Old Hinu. Sorry, I'm having trouble he- reading my handwriting there. Mm-hmm. Um, now, God of War, the card game, is kind of based on the video game. But I was so impressed with the game mechanism of this. So you would set like the scenario you're going to be playing. And this is a cooperative game. And you Mm -hmm. have like your monsters that you're battling and you put them down. Now, depending on what happens in the game, if you stun them, let's say, then you would flip one of those cards over because they're like a combination of so many cards for like the bat, like the battle you're taking. Then you would flip one of those cards over and then now you can actually damage them because their shields are down or something like you, you can actually damage. So you need to flip that over to be able to access them. But depending on the monster you're attacking, the cards have like different abilities and you have different things you need to do in order to be able to defeat them. And we all have different characters. We all have different abilities. And it was just like so interesting. So I was like, okay, well, I'm attacking here. So it flips this card over. So now this character's or this bad guy's, how it worked kind of completely changed. And then afterwards, oh, okay, now it flipped back. And it was cool. Like the interaction of the gameplay with how the characters changed as you play was so unique. I have not seen this in any other game. Now, this was quite the learn. Like it was not a straightforward, oh, let's let's play this. It looks easy. This was it was a little complex trying to wrap our head how it all worked. And then you have the new monster and then how that one had to be battled. And, you know, like, and like it was, so it wasn't, I was like, oh, we have a quick, you know, let's learn this one real quick. It wasn't real quick. Be prepared for that. But it was worth it. Like that gameplay and the mechanism was so unique and interesting and it like it made this whole battle feel like so neat and apparently it is very uh similar to the video game i don't know like there i think one was like a floating head character like there was like so it was it was neat i think my character ended up dying the first one to die um so i was just kind of a spectator for part of it so you could have that happen as well um but I quite enjoyed this. So that was my number six, God of War. Cool. Yeah, I didn't see that one at Princess Auto. There was a few that were kind of going around at all of them, but that one I did not see. Hmm. All right. My number five is Lofoten, made in 2022 by Sebastian Desjardin. Now, this one got me because of the art again. Um, it has a, a, I feel like it's the same artist. I'm not 100% sure, but of the game, The Bloody Inn. Um, there's also another one he does where it's like these, this weird quirky art, but this one is more colorful. That one was kind of like a dark art, whereas this one's like a colorful, but still the same kind of sketching. And this is a two player and this is a hundred percent a Viking game. You are each, um, a different type. Uh, what are they? They don't call them clans. They call them. Oh, I can't remember what their grouping is called, but you have, you're each from a different one and you have this wheel in front of you, which signifies your ship. And, um, there's a big strip of all these goods that is like the player, the game board in front of you. And you start with the, your ship at one of them. And then you have these cards in your hand. You, you have three always. You can either play the left or the right or the middle, obviously. The left, if you play, you're going to do the actions that are on the left of that card. If you play the right, you're going to do the actions on the right. And if you play the middle, you're going to stick it into your um, boat, which is that hexagon in front of you. And um, then on another turn, you may turn it. And as you turn it, and it once it reaches the all the goods if it matches the good it automatically loads onto your boat and so it's kind of neat because then once it gets back to you it will automatically unload and then you will place it into one of these warehouses now there are four warehouses and they can only contain one good each now you share the warehouses so as soon as somebody puts a good in one 
that's the only thing you can put in that warehouse. Um, and then with when you use the cards like on the right or the left, those are kind of movement cards. So it'll either move your boat to the right or the left, or you can rotate your ship so that you can load. It's really neat mechanic. And so you have to figure out, okay, how am I going to use these? Because I want to go get those fish there, but I have to move it to the left and I have to um, turn my boat like um, twice counterclockwise kind of thing. And you kind of all have to get it planned out. And then once you get to a certain amount of, say, fish or treasure, then you get to grab one of the Jarls. There's three Jarls, I believe. Maybe there's only two in the game. And you can only ever have one. And then they give you like an ongoing ability. And then you play this until all the tiles are gone. And then you count up who's got the most in each warehouse. Um, and then I think your your money, because you, you get can get money as well for different actions. And those can give you more actions or more movement throughout the game. But it's it's very cool. The mechanics are so neat for a two-player game. And this was another one that I got at GobFest in the flea market. Another $10 game that I had been watching and waiting for. And I was going to buy nice. a brand new. But luckily I waited and there it was. But yeah, that's my number five, Lofton. Nice. And yeah, I've never heard of that one. Yeah, and you've been lucky with the, the flea market. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you get some good stuff. Now, my number five is one that was fairly recently... Um, kickstarted and that's tiny epic vikings now i'm dedicated to the tiny epic series i have them all i have backed all the new ones that's about to come out so i'm just i i have them now i have to keep doing right so i got tiny epic vikings it was published in 2023 by scott alms and with this one here is like you got the main map on the on the board and this was actually i think the first one that came with an actual play uh like game board because tiny oh. epic normally has like cards that you put together and then you create the map or whatever this one actually had a player board and it's the islands and you have like your vikings and your boats and i think temples and you're gonna go like it's an area control resource collection and um yeah kind of area control game and what like as you kind of spread and start to claim um these different islands you'll be collecting certain runes and then if you have the most rune like the runes will like represent the different gods that's available and you'll have different god cards uh, that's out there and then as you collect and now if you have the most of that one then you kind of get like the favor of the god as well but then those runes can be taken away from you as other people take claims of those uh islands as well so things will change as you play um and then like the components you know we have like the wooden components like tiny epic they barely fit in that tiny little box but there's a lot going with it and then you have like the different characters that you play it plays over three era it's one that i need to play again i think i've played like maybe once or twice um and we keep talking about that we need to have a tiny epic game day. And <laughs> yes, we do. And it just never happens. Um, but this one was a very interesting. Now, the first time I played, what's great with this is it is on Dized. So to learn how to play, you just open the app and it has a walkthrough tutorial. So it teaches you how to play the game. My one drawback on that is it will dictate how you play your first game. So you're not getting a true sense of how the gameplay goes. So you have to play like a second game where you can then make your own decision and not just do what the game told you to do um, to kind of get the feel. And then, you know, like the, the area control angst and that sort of stuff that that's happening in the game. So Dice definitely is great to learn the game, but it's not going to be playing the game, if you know what I mean, because mm -hmm. it's so scripted and dit. Like there was some on Dice where you just let them know what you've done and they walk you through it. But I think it does make that play tutorial a lot more complex for them to put together. So with this one, it was just kind of like a, a guided tutorial. It does go through absolutely everything and you learn how to play the game and it teaches you everything. So that's great. But 
it's not going to be a true feel of the game. You'd have to play it one more time after that, at least to get a sense of how the game feels. Um, but yeah, that's my number five, Tiny Epic Vikings. Yeah, I was wanting to play this before we did the list. It probably would have made my list, but one day I'll get to play this one. One day. For sure. <laughs> All right. My number four is Vikings Gone Wild, played uh, made in 2017 by Julian Vergen Jean. And this one is, it used to be one of my favorite games. We played it all the time, like when I was an early gamer um, back in the day. And I love this game and I haven't played it for so long. I've tried to bring it out because I really want to try. There's a team variant, 2v2. I really mm-hmm. want to play that. I'm I'm um, hoping someone at Melcon, three other people will play this with me and we can play the team variant because it's so fun. It's a deck builder. And so what you're doing is you like, like in any normal deck builder, probably draw five cards. I don't know exactly, but what you do with them is you'll either have beer or gold, or I I believe it's like an attack value of some sort. So you can use those to um, get different cards that are already, that are on the the board and it's just this board is full of different types of cards so you can buy like taverns that will let you draw more cards during your turn you can um, upgrade your town hall because you start with this basic town hall and then you upgrade it Um, it gives you more um, protection if somebody's coming to attack you and the attacking isn't that that bad like for the um, person being attacked all you do is you uh, basically will flip that I don't think you flip your card. You put something on that means like you can't use that one building for your turn. So it's not like they can take much from you. You can actually take some beer and gold from some people with certain cards. There's also this whole um, line of cards up top, which will give you cool things that are not in your normal deck. Um, They might let you... um, give you extra defense that round and you would hold those cards in your hand and not play them until everybody else has played because if they attack you and you play down these defense cards well they can't they aren't successful um there's of course these objectives at the end of the game which i believe i can't remember exactly if everybody scores them or if only one person like it's whoever has the most of this or whatnot but you're just trying to go get points which are like trophies kind of thing and it's kind of neat how that scores it's it's quite different but like it was the first i think deck builder that i played and loved and it's it's such a good game it i can't even think of anything bad about it the art is so cool it's (laughs) cartoony it actually Mm. this game was made after an app this was an app because i remember when i bought the game that's what i hear yeah yeah he was like how old would he have been about 15 he's like i think i've played that before on my phone or something i'm like what really but yeah apparently it was an app but it turned into a board game and and a really cool board game so this is one i'm hoping i can get played at uh Malcon next weekend and that's my number so four. i need to pack it and bring it well i'll bring it because i have the team oh, okay perfect thing, so. okay perfect <laughs> I think I did start a list for Melcon. Oh, it's going to be a big list. Oh, my God. I'm like going to have to do like oh. 100,000 trips back and forth. Well, I have <laughs> Euphoria and my little scythe on there, but I don't have to bring those now because you'll oh, have I guess them, right? <laughs> I'll have them, yeah. Nice. So that was your number four, Vikings Gone Wild. Yeah. My number four is Vikings Gone Wild. Oh, no way. I didn't know you played this one. Well, now that yeah, you, I own it, it, and I've played oh, okay. it a, few, a couple of times, and then it is I like the it. art is so cutesy, and then your yeah. beginning thing you have like beer, and then all the resources you're creating, and then you need to have like if you want to be able to keep them for the next round, then you need to have built the storage in order to be able to keep them and moving things around. It's yeah, everything you said. It's such a neat neat game. Yeah. Um, it's definitely one that yeah, I'm in to play it at Melcon. So, okay, good. Well, we just need um, two more people was, then. <laughs> I'm sure we can do it. Oh, yeah. I know Cherry yeah, likes no. it too, so I'm sure she would play too. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a neat, super cool. Like, it was just, the whole thing was just so fun when we were playing it. So, yeah. And it's been a little while, so uh, it's time to yeah, bring it back to the table. So, too. number four, Perfect. Vikings Gone Wild. Awesome. All right. Well, my next one is one of your favorite games ever. It's called <gasps> Feast for Odin. 
<laughs> I still think you just had a bad experience with this one because this is an awesome game. Um, the first time I played it, though, I was too like, what? How am I ever going to cover this board? So this is, at the time, I think it was Uwe Matt Rosenberg's masterpiece in his mind because it kind of came brought together a lot of his mechanics. Um, he had actually made patchwork while he was developing this game, uh-huh. and that was the polyamino part of it, um, which is another like gem classic. But this one has... Lots of different mechanics in it. To begin with, it's a worker placement that has like 50 different worker placement spots. And then if you have the expansion, it adds like 20 more. And you're thinking, why do you need so many? But you do have a lot of Vikings. So you start with, I can't even remember how many, but you have quite a few. And you can place, like, it's funny because you will put um, the... When I say 50 worker place in spots, there's like four or five columns. And the first spot is um, like where you'd place one Viking, the second spot two and three and so on. But and then they kind of get juicier as you go. So like the first uh, r- column, it's kind of um, smaller things. And then as you go on, it's kind of bigger things. So you can um, gather food like fish and um animals and all kinds of things and you need the food you need the vegetables because you have to feed the um odin basically you have to feed this feast every round and how you do that is so neat because you have these little um cardboard tiles that um represent food uh, different types of vegetables beans and all kinds of things and they're all shaped differently and you'll place them on this table that you have on your player board and you have to make sure that you've completed the table so you have to make it long kind of thing and then if you've completed that then you don't take any negative points each round so that's his way of feeding where it's it's a unique way of doing that but you can also go raiding um, you can go whaling if you've got a boat and while you're doing all this you're also trying to cover up your player board with um, different tiles of you know um, coats and uh treasures that you've raided and you're trying to do that strategically not just cover it up like that but there's also these all these little things on your board that you don't want to cover up so you're trying to surround them because when when you have surrounded them then they all become income so the first time I played this it was I don't even think I got halfway through my player board covered like (laughs) how is this even possible because then there's other um quest boards that you can also gather and i'm like what how are you why are you getting more when you could never fill this one but as you play it more and more you you figure out the more boards you get the more things you'll get and the more you'll cover and so i have gotten to the point where i've covered my whole board plus some other um storage long I forget what they are, sheds and things like that, some exploration boards, and it does come along and it just gets better and better this game. There's also some card play in this game. I haven't really delved much into the card play, but some people have, and that adds a whole other aspect because it gives you kind of player powers or makes things that you um, go gather, you'll get extra of those things. Um, it's just, there's just so much going on in this game. It's a big, big, meaty, heavy game, but I just love it. And that I haven't played this one for a while either, but this one is not one I'd want to bring because it is a table hog. I don't think I've played it more than two players. I don't even know if I could fit three players on my table and I have a pretty decent <laughs> sized table. It is a table hog, but that's my number three feast for Odin. Yeah. Yeah, I've only played this one the one time at <laughs> Godfest. We skipped the last round. We're like, you know what? Nothing's going to happen here. Let's just not do the last round. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, it did have lots of interesting elements. Yeah. Uh, it should have, like, you know, with the polyomino portion, it was interesting. There's so much that you can gather and you can transform them into other things as well. Like, the yeah, whole, they flip. and all right. the they different upgrade. actions, like, yeah. All the different actions you yeah. can activate and do is really interesting. It's definitely thematic, like everything kind of oh, yeah. had to do. The whole gameplay felt like such a chore. 
to me. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, oh no, but if you play it some more, you could get to like it. <laughs> and honestly, I don't want to go through the chore trying to get to like it. I'll just play games I like now. Yeah. <laughs> and that no, was just my whole feeling about it. Taste. Like and it could, it could be like the whole time we're playing, it was just like, it was almost like I was waiting for it to be over. <laughs> well, you and, did have the flea market waving in front of you. So well, was, there was that as well. And or no, know, the it was auction. Just like, it was the auction. auction. Oh, it was the yeah. auction. Oh my God, yeah. I should have skipped the auction. I bought a lot of games <laughs> that day. But it was just like, the whole thing was just like, this should be fun. <laughs> like, mm. And it just didn't, it didn't, didn't get it, the yeah. fun element of it, it just, it was, I, I don't know. I don't know. So because it was so, I, I'll just play games that I know I enjoy. <laughs> you know, I love patchwork. I'll play all those little element games and no yeah. broken down version instead of this big, massive headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, because that was the very bottom of my list. So. <laughs> I still put it on the list, but yeah. yeah. Okay, my number three is Raiders of the North Sea, published in 2015 by Sham Phillips. And this game, oh my God, it is so good. So I bought this one secondhand and got opening it and everything was in shrink. I was like, oh my God, this is great. So I'm opening everything. And then there's metal coins. And there's like really cool metal coins. So I got super excited about that. And then we got playing it and this was... Such a unique worker placement game. I had never come across that mechanism in any other game. This was the first time I come across this. And what it was is you start with a worker. You have the one little lone worker. And you can go and place him on a spot, an action you want to activate. And then you get to activate what that location does. But the board starts with workers kind of spread out across the board. And then you would go on another location and you pick up that worker. And then you get to activate what that location did. And then so you get two action each round, where you place your worker, where you pick up your worker. And now the pick the worker you picked up is going to be the next worker you're going to have to place. Now there's three colors. You've got black, white, and gray workers. And some location will activate differently depending on the color worker you place. And some wor location needs a specific colored worker in order to be able to activate it. So you're kind of building yourself up in the bottom of portion of the map until you have a big enough Viking crew um, and enough resources that you can go and start pillaging the the village and the bigger cities up towards the top of the map so that you can kind of get those bigger benefits there. Uh, and then it'll give you points as well. And then, but you have to have build yourself up so you have enough strength, I guess, or attack value to be able to be successful in those attacks. And I think there's dice involved as well. Um, but it was so, so neat. Like that place a worker, pick up a worker, that felt so unique. And there's a bunch of different things that you can kind of do and concentrate on that'll provide points. So there's a lot of options of what you want to be doing. And one other thing with worker placement is, oh, I want to do that. And then somebody take that spot and they wreck it for you and you can't go there. Well, if somebody goes and activates the spot you wanted... You can still go there, but it's going to have to be your second action where you draw from there instead. So you're going to have to change your plan on the fly all the time as you play this game. But it was cool. And this is the one that I was telling you, like, this game has made me want to get now the rest of the North series. I want all the North series, of, like, games associated with this one. It was just so cool. I have, like, all the West um the West Kingdom series. I have one of the South Tigris series. Um, I want all of the Norse. Like, it's just, it's just such a neat. And the, all the games from that series, like the different, like, yeah, I'm enjoying them. So now I was like, okay. I used to be like, no, of course, I'm not going to complete a collection just to complete a collection. <laughs> yeah, but look at Tiny Epic. Um, but then, yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, no, I think I, I think I do want to do that. And I do want the rest of the North Sea series. And then Raiders is the only one I have right now. I don't care so much about expansions, per se. We know how I am with expansions. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to get the, the base games. Yeah. No, that's good. You get the, yeah. the North um, cause you'll, you'll need explorers and then shipwrights, but make sure you get yeah. the redux. 
I yeah. have the West. We also have the rest. Ashley yeah, has the have South. Yeah, have all the West. <laughs> um, I had one of the South, but then I traded it to her for something because I'm like, I don't need all Northwest, East, South. And then <laughs> someone also have to get the East when that comes out. The East is going to be, yeah. We'll all have them. But yeah, nice. awesome. Nice. Yeah. All right. That was your number three. My, My number, number two three. is a crossover, and this <gasps> is NAR. I, I thought Nara. I thought so. Yeah, NAR is one of my favorite, um, like filler games as well. Um, race game again. Love the the racing, but still engine building. The cards are so beautiful and vibrant. And yeah. it's funny when that's two games now, two Viking games that are vibrant, which is not usually something you think of when you think of Viking. I suppose, right? Yeah, they're literally. But I mean. It's just so neat that this one, with a card play and how you're deciding, am I just going to build up those piles? Am I going to um, just try to get a bunch of recruits so I can just get a bunch of cards to add to my ship and then just pump that engine out? There's just so many different things you can do in this game. And uh, the it comes with a little mini expansion that you can add. I still haven't even added that, that I've and I've played it so many times. I'm surprised. And I still haven't, you know, got bored with just the base of it. Nice. But yeah, I just love it. That's my number two. Nar. Well, my number two is also a crossover with one of yours. Oh, let me and that's you. Champions oh, of yes. Midgar. Yeah. Yes. Um, as much as Reavers of Midgard has left me flat, I think it left me flat just because how much I love this version of the game. This one, to me, it is just like, it's one of my top 10 games of all time. It's just so satisfying. So it's worker placement. You have so many workers to start with, and you can go and get an extra one. With those workers, you can also go and collect warriors. And those warriors will go on your board, and they're the dice. And you'll have, like, the red dice, the white dice, and the black dice. And there's, like whether they battle with swords, spears, or axe. Now, some of them will have more defense, so they'll have a shield so you can defend some attack. Some of them will have no defend, but they attack harder as well. Um, We all select a different player we're going to play as, and all of the player powers have like a variety, like a special ability that you would have that may not have for the others. So that's kind of interesting as well. And then... Every round, you're going to go and select what you want to do. So you can go and collect some of those warriors so you have more dice uh, to battle with. But then you need to send some of the workers to go to battle if you want to do a battle. So you need to battle. There'll be ogres that attacks the village. If nobody defeats the ogre, we all gather shame. And the more shame you have, the more negative points those are going to be worth. Now, if you do battle the ogre and are successful, you get to take one of your shame and give it to somebody else. So that's good as well because it's negative points for them, but then you get rid of the negative point for yourself. Then you can go and attack the the monsters. And they have like the official Viking names, which are impossible to figure out how to pronounce from the way that it's spelled. So I'm I'm not going to try. Um, But you have those monsters that you can go and attack and they'll provide you with gold uh, and resources if you're successful. And then you'll send your warriors to there. But now you keep in mind, if you do too many battles, you have to divide all your dice between the different battles because they can't all be at the same place at the same time. And then you'll have the battles that goes across the sea. And that's where you're going to need to put them on the boats. And the boats has so much storage available. And you got to keep in mind that the dice are going to use up the storage. But so is the food that you're sending along that voyage because they need to survive the trip. Um, so you need to send enough ration for it to to last a trip. And depending on how far you're going, how much food is going to be required. And then as well as what happened along the trip, you'll have kind of like a condition of the trip. It could be like, you know, nice trips with smooth sailing. All is fine. And you just feed your people and you're good to go. Could be that, oh, no, we came across the sea monster and we have to battle that first before we can go and battle the actual monster. That's good. If you're successful, you get... You know, you get points, but then you could also lose some of your warriors to that battle. Or it could be that, yeah, you know, it was rough seas and then you somebody fell overboard or some of the food went rotten or different things. And then you go and battle those monsters further down. Um, and they're going to be giving you a lot more points and more gold as well. So they're worth the trip for the points. Um, and then each of those monsters, like the sea, the ones you travel to and then the ones... 
uh, at the top will have a different color associated with it. And you're going to get bonus points for combination of blue, yellow, and red monsters you can put together. So it's a good idea to try to get a variety. But everything about this game, I love. This gameplay is so fun. Now, the Ragnarok, or Valhalla, the Valhalla expansion is supposed to add... Where if you roll and all your bat like your dice dies, you can still do stuff with them. There is a time I played and I had the worst dice luck ever. And my score, my final score was just around the first corner. And sometimes you almost go like go all the way around the board. <laughs> I had like 27 points. That's where having that expansion would have made a big difference. Um, but I still really enjoy the gameplay of it. Like, yeah, it sucked. I'm doing terrible, but it's still exciting. You're rolling the dice to see because you roll the dice. You need to hit them by three. Am I going to hit them by three? No, I only hit by two. Okay, great. So now he takes two damage. You get to roll whichever dice didn't die because he killed two of them. So now I only have one die. And if I roll another hit, I'm good. My all my warriors are gonna be dead, but then I like that whole excitement of the battle. I love it. I love it. Number two, Champions of Midgard. Yeah, I do want to play this one again soon too. So that's so far. We got four crossovers. I think that's it for crossovers because I think I know your number one. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you haven't played my number one, although it's kind of a crossover because it's Raiders of Scythia. So this was oh. made in 2020 by Shem Phillips. Now, this is basically another version of Raiders of the North Sea. It just oh, has okay, a, yeah. like a, well, it's in Scythia and it's got Greece in there. And so I, that was, and the art is a little bit different. Like his, um, all his like North and uh, West and South series all has kind of the same art. Whereas this one's mm -hmm. a little bit different. Um, I can't remember who the artist is of this, but. Does it still it's have just, like that same worker placement? Oh yeah, mechanism? it's exactly the same. Oh, cool. you you always ever just have one worker, and depending what color you grab back, that's the kind of action you can do next. Um, it has it has one thing that I don't think is in the base game. It basically, I, what I'm told is it has all the expansions in this, but it's the bit like it's just uh, one okay. game. Yeah. So it has like um you can gather horses and eagles and those will go on top of your vikings when you've um gathered more vikings for your crew and they mm. will give you I think the eagles give you um I think they give you more strength the horses give you some end game points um you can uh, there's mead in this, so you can use nice. it to like um if you're injured it can get rid of injuries um what else is different in this? Because I have played both, but I just prefer this because this is the one I have, and it doesn't have mm. doesn't look like it's a game full of expansions, but they're all kind of in there. Um, I'm trying to think what other difference it is, but uh, there's the dice rolling, same kind of thing when you're like raiding. Um, you have to there's certain dice that you roll to try to get some gold and like the resources that you can use to oh, until you go on quests. I don't know if that's in the base game. So once you have these things, then you can go on these quests and they will give you big points. It's just a really good game. John really likes this game too. Now that I think of it, nice. I have to pull this back out because it's just such a fun game. But yeah, that's my number one, Raiders of Scythia. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't played that one, but if it's like Raiders of the North Sea, yeah. I know I like it. Yeah. My number one is the best game ever. It was actually <laughs> my number one game in my top 100 as well. And that's Blood Rage. Uh, Blood Rage was published in 2015 it. by Eric M. Lang, and it's just so good. I don't know. It is just so good. Every time I play it, first of all, Lee loves this one too, so he will play it. It's an easy yeah. one to get to the table because the people I play with wants to play it. So that right away kind of helps pop it up a few levels, right? But then every time I play it, it is so satisfying. So it starts with card drafting, and you'll have cards, and you'll be collecting them some will be like battle cars some will be gold cars some will be like different things that you can um upgrade your um the people in your like because we each have a different clan and you can upgrade the things in your clan yeah uh, you can like upgrade your boat you can upgrade your leader uh or the the chief whatever he's called oh my god i'm drawing a blank now the um or sorry 
The Jar- Jarl? Yeah. How do you say it? Jarl? Jarl. The Jarl. Jarl. Yeah, so you can upgrade him or you can upgrade uh, your warriors as well. And you can actually bring in monsters to join your clan. So you have these different monsters that's kind of part of your clan and kind of takes part of your battle. But this is all as well like an area control but the island like or the the board is slowly getting destroyed because ragnarok is a point us so so it's it's getting destroyed um but then you get kind of points for um completing certain battles or having your warriors die because they die with honor um so you get points for that or you get points if you win the battle but then you have different upgrades that could give you different things and then anybody that gets destroyed though and it all has miniatures for all of these things as well which looks really good and then you take the your if you got destroyed then you send those guys to Valhalla and then at the end of the game now you can have a card that gives you points for them coming back from Valhalla so at the end of the round they come back from Valhalla so it has like an area control component to it it has that battle component to it and then the your um your currency is your rage so you're trying to get so that you build up the most rage so you can spend them to activate all these different different things and then you're battling against each other and you could totally mess somebody up because i would always have like hey my last rage and i'm using it to put uh to do this and i still got to put my goal down because the goals are what's going to give you the points and then somebody battles me and one of their abilities they steal my rage and if I'm out of rage, I can't do any actions anymore. Even if they're free action, it's like, I didn't do my goals. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, no. Oh, so no. like, totally right. But it was so satisfying still as well. It's like, oh my God. And like the, the excitement that it creates. And it's like, well, I might still be able to like, it's like, oh, but I don't have that goal now. Like it's, it is so good. It is so good. I absolutely love this game. My number one, Blood Rage. Yeah, that's. I had it written down before I even made wrote our whole list there. That that was your number one. <laughs> I've only played this once, long, long time ago. I I hated it because it was area control, but but now I'm liking area control more, so I may so not maybe you have to try it anymore. again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have to give this one another try. Oh, this, I don't know. Like, I bought it a long time ago, but it wasn't for me. It was a gift for my brother. And then years after I bought it to him, we played it with him. And I was like, oh, that was good. And then I finally <laughs> got my own copy and it replaced. So I was like, oh, my God, this game is so good. So, yeah. Yeah, Blood Rage is up there for me for sure. Awesome. So that was our top nine Viking games. There's a lot mm -hmm. of games that actually we have a few crossovers, but we have quite a bit that are not on each other's list at all as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a few games that we know we haven't played and wanted to that are still Viking themed. So there's there's a fair bit of Viking themed games out there. Yes, there are. That Vikings. The it's just Vikings. I would like to find a copy of that one. Yes. Um, I hear really good things about it. And yeah. I need to get my copy of that Viking game played. Um, but oh, yeah, it looks so good. Like the, the, yeah, but I hear like so, so things um, about it, but I find reviews sometimes that, Oh, this game was terrible. And I played it and I love them. So <laughs> I put a eh, little like yeah, green of salt with who's... reviews. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. No, now, our next episode is going to be recaps to Melcon. It's coming up. Which I'm so excited. So now me and Carla, we share the exact same birthday. June 21st is our birthday. Melcon is from the 21st to the 23rd because we gift ourselves a board <laughs> game retreat for our birthday because we deserve it. Um, so, and... And this has been tradition for me for, well, since 2019. I've had my first Malcon in 2019. I do it every year. This is the first time we've gone, like, went at a location in Acme. I had done a public one in Didsbury because it would get people say, oh, I wish I knew I would have come. And I was like, oh, my God, there was no room left. Right. Um, so beautiful. not to have that limitation, we're doing it at the Acme Legion. So if you're in Alberta, keep that in mind. 
Acme Legion from June 21st <laughs> to the 23rd. Board games going down is going to be amazing. Yeah. Now, my guest room, because I have to clean it up. You're using my guest room. Mm -hmm. But it's filled with games oh, from okay. <laughs> two of my different friends. Uh, well, three like three sellers mm -hmm. for the flea market portion of Malcon. Because we have like a flea table set up. So games are available to purchase. And then I bring a bunch of my games as well available to play. So there is a big, big collection of games to play. Plus, I'm a minute away, so we can go and get more games if we need to. My collection right now is probably at 850 board games. So plenty to pick from. Plus, a lot of people that attend also bring their own board games. Yeah. Um, and then the wait, Legion wait, wait, will... Wait, wait a sec. Are you, you're not bringing that big, giant library, are you? Not all of it. How could I? No, but like how many are you bringing? I wouldn't, I don't think you have to bring. I don't know how many I'm going to bring, but if we need to, I can exactly. run home. It's a minute I was going to say, bring some Friday, and then if people want them there still, keep them. If not, you know, we could take them back to We could bring, bring some back ones. and forth. Yeah. Maybe that'd be the way yeah. to do, because otherwise it's going to be 100,000 trips just moving yeah. games. Exactly. But no, I could never bring the whole collection. Could you imagine? No, <laughs> no I, I meant like as much as you had last time. Like that was a lot. But I guess that was other people's as well. Well, right? other people, plus last time, as I packed, they stayed, no, the last time, oh, well, right. last time we did it at my house. So I didn't have to pack anything. Last time in Didsbury, as I brought the game and they got packed back in the boxes, they stayed packed because I was moving. Right. Because I didn't plan this, but when we planned our Malcon in Didsbury in 20, would have been what, 2021? 2022? When you, when you moved? Yeah, 2022 was in Didsbury. Yeah. And then... We bought a house mm -hmm. and I didn't know this would be happening when I started planning Malcon. And then the possession date was July 4th, which was like the week after Malcon. I was like, what have I done? So, <laughs> so we're just like, okay, just the game stay packed. We're moving because we're packing the house to move as well at the same time. So I just left everything packed. So I didn't mind packing a lot of games to bring because it needed to be packed anyways. Um, but yeah, so, and then at the Legion, uh, the Legion will be hosting the concession. So there'll be breakfast, lunch, supper available in the evening. There'll be, um, coolers, beers, and spirits available to purchase for adults that wants to have a drink. Um, because Ooh. of the liquor license, you cannot bring outside liquor at the event. Um, but they're also going to try to have, uh, friendly meals for vegetarian and celiac as well awesome. um and they'll have snacks and drinks and stuff available also so because acme mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of restaurants there's like a little uh grocery store people could walk to if needed but it'd be nice to have something available so we can go um and then it helps the legion can you also um, bring outdoor food in i did ask about that too and they would make room to store it there if needed yeah like we can bring our own snacks and stuff. Yeah. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, of okay. course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's an option as well. Um, but it's nice to have an option there also. Oh, yeah. Um, what else do we want to say about Malcon? Um, hmm. I don't know. I think that's probably about it. Because I'm getting like super excited. I just had my care package come from Vistaprint with all the, the stuff I ordered. So I had, and I had ordered the, I always say it wrong, lanyards. Oh, yeah, and, uh, that's right. The name, I always say Linyards instead. <laughs> so, so I Googled it first before I would bring it up. How is it spelled again? <laughs> like, so, yes, yeah, so I got a bunch of lanyards and then name tag holders. And I had from Vistaprint a bunch of like name tag, like Melcon name tags just ready on the side to kind of sharpie our names onto it. Um, I ordered myself a Melcon t shirt. So <laughs> I was super excited about that. And then I got a sign with like all of like my social media so people could follow on there and you could just scan the QR codes as well. So our podcast is on there. Oh, nice. um, it's getting quite official. And then I got a sign to put outside so it shows where Malcon is. And I didn't put the year on it so we can use it again next year. Oh, nice. Year. Good idea. So yeah, super excited. Now I have no idea how many people are coming because cost I'm kind of doing by donation if people wish. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the Legion well, has been really great. Like I'm a member of the Legion now as well. So they've been really great at making the the facilities kind of available to me. So cost is not as significant as it could have been. So, you know, so, and then if we buy lots of food from the concession, then it'll be even lower. Yeah, make and then that it helps money the Legion, too. So. Perfect. Yeah, so by donation, if people wish, but so it's open. It's going to be Friday from 3 to midnight, and then Saturday from 9 to midnight, and Sunday from 9 to 5. So lots of opportunity to play tons and tons of games. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah. <sighs> It'll be fun. I'm excited. <laughs> so fun. It's going to be like Christmas. I'm not going to sleep for a week now here pretty soon. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's going to be amazing. So if you can, be sure to attend. But then we play tons of games. So and then there's a bunch of door prizes and stuff. But um, we'll also be doing a recap of our, I guess we'll do our top nine games we played during Malcon and just talk about the different games that we played. Um, so if you don't get to attend, you can hear about it. If you did attend and you didn't get to play with us, you can hear about which one games are. Uh, was the, our favorite and if you did get to attend and you get to play with us then you can hear about yourself on the podcast so be <laughs> sure to tune in for that next one um now before we call it quits carla where can we find you i'm on instagram at board game specialist all one word and i have a facebook page red deer board game fanatics what about you so on Instagram, as a, I'm there as Mal underscore board game underscore room. We also have a uh, Discord channel. So be sure to check us out on the Discord channel. We'll have the link down below. My Facebook page is Mal's Board Game Room. And my YouTube channel is also Mal's Board Game Room. So thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Be sure to tune in for the next episode because it's going to be so amazing. Um, and we're going to go get ready for Malcon. So bye, everybody. Bye for now. Skull. (laughs) That's what Vikings say. (laughs) (laughs) Good to know.